Attention A students. Are you making great grades in your honors and AP classes? Are you loading up your transcripts with lots of impressive extracurricular activities too? If you are, beware. Attention parents and teachers. Are you providing the best possible, the best possible college prep education you can for your students? If you are, beware. Yes, beware high achievers, A students, devoted parents, dedicated, hardworking teachers too. Beware. Why? Because we have believed that high achievement in school will lead to high achievement in life. But that is not so. For more than four decades, I have been an educator, teaching English and communication classes now to thousands of middle school and high school students. And I confess, I confess that for so many years, I miss teaching critical skills even to my A students. I had a blind spot, and you probably do too. I first began seeing where I was missing the mark when I received a phone call from one of my former A students nearly 20 years ago. He was attending college at the time. I had been his competitive speech coach. I recognized his voice right away, and I heard distress that day in his voice. I couldn't imagine why. He was a high achiever, a stellar student when I knew him. I remembered that he had earned a scholarship to the university he was attending, and I'd been hearing through the grapevine that he was sailing through his honors courses. So what could be wrong? Well, his story came out that day, and I remember he said something like, hey, hey, I, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I need your help. In my classes, I can get all the right answers, but I feel like I'm doing all the wrong things. In my discussion groups, I know how to win arguments, but I'm losing friends. And that was candor. I was touched by his transparency, and so I gathered my thoughts and collected my wits and offered a few ideas about getting better connected with his classmates and interacting with his professors. And then the call ended when this bright young man said, hey, thanks so much for these ideas. I really appreciate your help, Mom. Mom, that wasn't just any A student. That was my son. So here my confessions begin. Yes, I, even with the best of intentions, there are days when we feel like failures, and that day I felt like a failure as a mother and a teacher who had worked very hard to provide a very comprehensive, accelerated program for her son during his education, and as I mentioned, he was stellar. He was stellar. And yet sometimes, even with these best intentions, we miss in our homes and in our schools teaching and learning skills that will help us excel in life, not just in the classroom. So what were these missing skills? Well, let me at least tell you a few skills I was hitting, I was teaching. You know exclusively when I taught English, you know exactly what skills I was teaching. I taught reading skills, writing skills, grammar skills, and I'm glad that I did. But indulge me for a minute, and let's go down memory lane to an English lesson I know you would have had in your English classroom, whether or not I was the teacher. The eight parts of speech. You remember those? Nouns, verbs, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, interjections, and prepositions. I never liked teaching prepositions. They're hard to teach. They're hard to remember. But I'm going to feature three of them today, and they're going to point us to these missing skills. Three little pesky prepositions, those tiny words that connect nouns and pronouns to other words in the sentence. They're connectors. About, from, with. About, from, with. You know I'd love you to say them. About, from, with. Thank you. Now, I contend 
that these three prepositions are at the crux of the skills we need to be excelling in life. Think about it. Human beings, we achieve, we grow, we thrive when we are learning about others, from others, and with others. That's how we solve our problems. That's how we get things done. That's how we excel in life, when we are learning about, from, and interacting with others. Now, we've gotten really, really good at learning about and from others, haven't we? There's a plethora of information at our fingertips. And I know there's youth here today. I want to take a minute, and I want to commend Gen Zers and millennials. They don't get enough of that. But you generations, like no other generations in all of civilization before you, are extraordinarily good at learning about and from experts on any topic, anywhere, at any time. Amazing. Yes, you are following world-class influencers and podcasters. You are learning about them and from them on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and YouTube. Good for you. And I know that some of the high achievers among you, you've already started your own social media channels and platforms, and others are learning about you and from you. Bravo, bravo, it's extraordinary and unprecedented. Bravo, but beware. When we are learning about and from others, that is passive learning. That occurs when we are consuming information. That's an important part of learning. However, however, it cannot be replaced by active learning, which also must happen. We learn actively when we are connecting, connecting with one another, not just consuming information. We need both. But these with skills, I call them. With skills are very, very difficult, aren't they? We've already heard a little bit about that today. These with skills, when we're learning with others and interacting with them, it happens dynamically and organically. It's so very difficult because you and I know that when one human being starts interacting with another human being, eh, it gets messy. It's difficult. It's complicated. These with skills, I call them. They are the tough ones. They're so very difficult. And for many years, I was missing them. Even as an English and communications teacher, with skills include, include speaking skills and listening skills that we use every day. I've made a short list here of these interactive skills. They are known as people skills, soft skills, you will hear them called. I say they are your interpersonal communication and connection skills, and they are skills. Things like being able to make a really good first impression. That's a skill that doesn't just happen naturally. The ability to offer sincere apologies, to give genuine compliments and encouragement to others. These are skills. They are learnable. The ability to extend a warm greeting or a friendly farewell. Skills. The ability to hold and sustain inclusive conversations, including people who are asserting contrary opinions. And those asserting those contrary opinions know how to do it winsomely, diplomatically, appropriately. These are all skills. The ability to be influential in difficult discussions, the ability to be forbearing and forgiving, during disagreements. Yes, oh, how I wish, oh, how I wish these with skills were what we set our hearts to list on our resumes and load on our transcripts. So, is there any sort of answer? 
<laughs> or solution. Of course there is. I, I just want you to know again, though, that these were the ones that I was missing in my own classrooms. I'm going to prove it to you right now. 80% of our day is spent in some sort of language exchange. Now, I had instincts about this 20 and 30 years ago when I first started teaching, but you can find these percentages anywhere now. This is common knowledge. So in our daily communication, 9% of that time is spent writing, 16% spent reading, 30% is spent speaking, 45% spent listening, and there you see it, the stark truth of it that hit me square in the face when I started tracking these things. Again, I, yeah, yeah, my A students, they knew lots of right answers to really hard questions, I confess. You, you will know, just like my son, the right answers to your hard questions, but you will be left feeling disconnected if you do not know how to meet and greet, converse and connect with the person sitting right beside you. Remember, remember success and achievement in school and achievement in life are not synonymous, especially if we're missing our with skills. So I have one other little piece of data for you here. And I'm quoting a very old study here from the Carnegie Institute of Technology. But this statistic is still regularly quoted by Forbes and other business leaders around the world. And it goes like this. I think I have it memorized. 85% of our financial success is due to human engineering, their study found, meaning personality, and your ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead with skills. Shockingly, 15% is due to technical knowledge. Yikes. Yikes. And I confess, I confess, I was distracted by that 15%. So what do we do? I was short-sighted. I don't want you to be short-sighted. You don't have to be. That phone call I received 20 years ago was my catalyst. It was my literal wake-up call. And now I will go to my grave trying to improve my own with skills. They are exclusively what I teach in my classes, my conferences, and in my online programs. But will you listen for your wake-up call? And I'm calling to you now to begin to focus on your ability to connect with others, your with skills. You can. And you know I don't mean being with others. We're busy people. We know how to sit beside others in our classes, in our cafeterias, eventually in our cubicles and in our conference rooms. But I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about this. The real challenge is being able to be interactive with one another. Here's some practical steps. Let me close with them. Here's what you and I can begin to do a little bit. First, calibrate. That's what my son was doing 20 years ago when he discovered he had a blind spot and I discovered. When you get calibrated, you become more self-aware. And you can find self-evaluations and assessments that will help you measure your people skills, your soft skills, these interpersonal communication skills. Take inventory. Know where you are strong and where you are weak. Calibrate. Because when you know yourself, you can begin to improve yourself. So can I. So once we calibrate, then next we create. We create opportunities and situations for ourselves that will help us create a well-rounded education so that we are interacting with one another. Now, this might mean that we join a club or we take a course. And I recommend that you join that club or take a course with somebody 
and let that clever course target one of your with skill weaknesses. And again, if you do it with somebody, let it be somebody that doesn't look just like you, or sound just like you, or think just like you. Then you're going to be able to create a balanced education for yourself that includes academic learning as well as social, emotional, interactive learning too. So calibrate, create, and then I say cultivate. Cultivate systems and routines in your life that will help these people skills become habitual for you. So for example, if you are somebody that usually only texts friends and family, you know what I'm going to say to do. I want you to stretch yourself a little bit and start calling one person every day on the phone. Do that because then you can cultivate your conversation skills, your listening skills. Then stretch a little farther, go a little crazy, eat a meal with somebody every day and without any device, no screen, no earbuds, and cultivate your connection skills. We can, we all can commit to calibrating, creating, and cultivating interactions every day with parents, with grandparents, with friends, with new acquaintances. Bottom line, bottom line, make sure you are not just consuming information. Consumption cannot replace connection. You and I need to be learning about, from, and with one another throughout the mess of life. And we can. We can. Today, you've heard a little bit more about the importance of connection skills from me, about from. But the real value, the real benefit will be when you discuss these ideas with someone. Beat them up a little bit. And then, and then consider real life applications. Perhaps today, my confessions can be a catalyst to catapult all of us to getting a little bit better at these connection skills. That is how civilization will remain civil. And that is how you and I will reach not just academic success, but personal and interpersonal success too. Thank you so much.